not Depcom, my name is Clint. People call me Depcom, so please call me Clint. It's fairly a common impression that top tax matters are usually the purview of the company's chief finance officer, vice president for finance, or some such top manager who handles the finances of a corporation. But decisions on tax compliance can affect the operations of a company, which is why it is considered prudent for the CEO to be aware of the developments in taxation, and so that he or she can determine how significant their impact will be on the company in general. I am grateful, therefore, for this chance to share with you some of the most important tax administration reforms that are being implemented in the Bureau, so that you may have a better idea and hopefully a better appreciation of how your tax compliance can be a catalyst for true and lasting change for this country. The Bureau, as you all know, is an institution, like other organizations, is composed of two primary elements, its operations and its staff. Any reform initiative in the revenue service, therefore, must address both elements if it is to enjoy lasting success. Let us therefore touch briefly the number of key technical or shall we say operational aspects of our tax reforms. In a nutshell, they address two of the most important factors in revenue generating efforts, taxpayers, Tax, ser well, tax services and tax enforcement. I should have said three factors. The first factor, the tax service is an ind indispensable element in the efforts to encourage voluntary compliance. The president in his inaugural speech called for the streamlining of requirements and processing in all government agencies. This is the impetus behind the Bureau's ongoing efforts to revisit the requirements and procedures for our most important business processes that involve the tax-paying public. By way of example, I can share with you that we have amended the mandatory requirements for the certificates authorizing registration. If you notice the realtors here, you'll notice we have implemented the five-day mandatory rule that the certificates of authorizing registration for the transfers of uh, Land uh, of land should be done in five days, provided you have submitted all the documentary requirements. We also have uh, slashed the documentary requirements. The operational issues are available in our website. Streamline the requirements and process for primary and secondary registrations with the BIR for the issuance of tax, issuance of tax clearance, because tax clearance, of course, is uh, another issue that. Uh, Sometimes our projects, our, our how we do business is affected by you know, a simple letter of a uh, simple certificate of tax clearance. Amended the guidelines for the issuance of the international carriers special certificate and the international carriers general certificate. And amended the guidelines and procedures for the issuance of the importers clearance certificates, brokers clearance certificates, and uh, what I, you know, I was unable to write here, and there are so many issuances actually now from the Bureau. The recent one is the, the issuance on um, uh, ODA projects. Another issuance is the issuance of claims for refund that have uh, failed to be brought to uh, the courts due to the deemed denied mandatory 120 day period. I know, I'm sure you're very familiar if you have pending claims for refund. The Bureau is in the process of re reviewing our tax forms to identify those who, where amendments are necessary in order to ease the burden of tax compliance. The ease with which a tax form can be accomplished should never be underestimated as an important factor in encouraging the public to comply with their tax obligations. I've been a tax lawyer for 23 years, and I, I must admit to you, I would request uh, uh, a very good tax compliance person to fill up my tax forms because I find it really beyond my comprehension sometimes to, to, to fill it out casually. Collection and enforcement, however, are also key factors in access 
in the success of our efforts to generate revenues. To this end, I can share with you two more significant endeavors in these aspects of our operations. Is the first is the expansion of the Compromise Settlement Program. You can ask questions later. Through this undertaking, we want to encourage taxpayers with delicate accounts to settle their obligations with the Bureau. Litigating a deficiency assessment case is time consuming, costly effort, and we would like to offer taxpayers with such cases an avenue through which they can resolve these matters with the Bureau and contribute further to the government's revenues. Our second effort is admittedly a rather more disciplinary undertaking which entails the continuance of the run after the taxi leaders program and our benchmarking project. Don't worry, we don't name and shame taxi leaders or suspected taxi leaders. We would rather do our job and then file the necessary cases if possible, if necessary. The rate program, as you all know, seeks to prosecute and bring to justice taxi leaders. In many ways, the crime of tax evasion seriously undermines our country's economic development and it's a betrayal of our civic duty because tax evaders takes advantage of the services delivered by government when we try to deliver our, our service, don't we? Um, and thereby earn profits or income from their enterprises. Even as they willfully violate the tax code and turn their backs on their duty, to support the very same economic programs from which they benefit, this is in itself a form of corruption that we must do our best to eradicate. Another development that I would like to share with you is uh, the expansion of the Bureau's investigation into tax use of fake, of fake stamps on some industries, on an industry, where the initially uh, the investigation was called uh, was uh, initiated against one cigarette manufacturer and which I found, uh, if you are to get to the bottom of this, I, I, I recently submitted for the commissioner's signature letters of authority, requesting for letters of authority to other companies. It is only fair that all players in the particular segment of the industry must be urged to faithfully comply with the country's tax laws. These and many other operational and legal efforts are being undertaken by the Bureau so that we may better fulfill our responsibilities to the people. But the Bureau, as I noted earlier, is composed of both processes and people. And we are of the firm belief that improvements in the business process must be complemented by efforts to improve employee satisfaction in the revenue service. For many years, the men and women of the Revenue Service have labored under the public impression that the Bureau, the Bureau is irredeemably a corrupt institution. I am here to tell you that this impression is a profound injustice to hundreds of revenueers who work long hours for very meager salaries. Let me give you an example. The starting salary, excluding deductions, such as income taxes, GSIS contributions, of an accountant at the Bureau who holds the item of accountant one is 21,000 pesos. At the SEC, an employee holding the same is at 50,000. More than half, more, more than half of what an account, a CPA in the Bureau receives. Actually, the Lowest pay grade of in, in the bureau is nine thousand pesos. I don't know if our if expats can understand how you can survive with nine thousand pesos if you could slate the dollars. Our entry level for a CPA is around a net at fourteen thousand pesos. And of course, as a lawyer, I would need to mention the entry level of a lawyer. The entry level of a lawyer is at 35,000 pesos as compared to another agency who is uh, uh, paying them at uh, 53,000 a month. Add to this is the reality that opportunities for career development are modest. And it will not come as a surprise in recent years 
the turnover of professionals and our technical staff, including IT personnel, at the Bureau has been steadily rising. No one can blame them for seeking greener pastures to support themselves and their families, for the alternative would be to resort to resort because the alternative would be to resort to corrupt practices in order to earn enough to meet their family's needs. In many ways, the meager salaries and lack of incentives constitute one of the primary causes of graft and corruption at the Bureau. And while it is true that the disciplinary sanctions do have an impact in curbing these twin scourges, it is also true that a positive approach to encouraging integrity and professionalism is always the more preferable and indeed the more humane option. A compensation scheme that affords revenuers with financial security, professional dignity will surely be an instrument, would surely be instrumental in encouraging them to resist the temptations of corruption. This is the impetus behind the Bureau, Bureau's effort to secure an exemption from the salary standardization law so that a truly competitive compensation and benefits package may be created for the men and women of the revenue service. Such a compensation schedule would recognize the reality that tax administration is a highly specialized field of discipline and that one and one that is indispensable to the economic development of this state. This is the reason why the government, the governments of the most economically advanced countries in Asia, such as Japan, Malaysia, and Singapore, pay the highest salaries to the officials and staff of their tax agencies. We in the Bureau hope to do the same in the near future so that our own tax agency may be truly at par with our neighbors and those who serve in one of the most challenging fields of governance may have the support and recognition that their profession deserves. The road of the, via, the Bureau ahead for the Bureau is truly an exciting one. I speak for the, my fellow reviewers when they say that I hope we can look to you, the top executives and the decision makers of the great corporate giants of the Philippines and Asia for support in this great journey of reform and transformation in the revenue service. The President has called us all to join him in his mission to institute meaningful change in our society. Let us join him in this historic endeavor and together seek out a new more and more prosperous and more peaceful future a real life of dignity for our people. Thank you and good morning. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas.